So I call him so hard, the employees wanna find me And then wanna hire me What's 100k to a guy like me? Could you please remind me? Fall so hard, this ain't easy Working late nights, you best believe me My grades can only go ace Never wanna see another B unless I'm Jay-Z Fall so hard, let's get paid Welcome to another episode of Farm So Hard. My name is Dr. Oscar Santalo. I'm a pharmacy and operations and compliance coordinator at Avon Health Orlando. I have my friends on the line, co-authors. This is what I'm talking about. Uh, guys, go ahead and introduce yourselves and tell them where you're from. Hi, I'm Joelle Ferrano. I'm a recent PGY2 Health System Pharmacy Administration graduate from the University of Chicago Medicine. I'm currently an inpatient supervisor at Heinz VA Hospital. Hi, my name is Niaz Sahim. I'm the second year pharmacy administration leadership resident at Houston Methodist Hospital. I'm Dr. Jacqueline Igwe. I am currently a clinical ambulatory pharmacist at Baptist Health South Florida. So we are all previous or current uh, PGY2 HSPA residents. So me and Jacqueline are kind of enjoying ourselves right now. Uh, Niaz, <laughs> still fighting a good fight. <laughs> Respect. Uh -huh. so, Pick on Niaz a little bit. Can you go ahead and tell everyone what, if they don't know what a health system pharmacy administration and leadership residency is? Sure. So it is a 24-month postdoctoral pharmacy training program. The postgraduate year one and postgraduate year two years are designed to flow seamlessly together without it really a need to have to reapply or participate in the early commitment process. Yeah. So it's like a two-year commitment and. Another background, so we are all part of PARC. Um, Jacqueline, can you tell them all what uh, PARC is? Yes, absolutely. So PARC uh, stands for Pharmacy Administration Resident Collaboration. So it really stems from residents from all over the um, United States, but nationwide, from academic to non-academic facilities and many, many different practice settings that come from administrative programs. So these are PGY-1 admin residents uh, and PGY-2 admin residents as well. So it really identifies the need for sharing administrative and leadership best practices among all of the HSPAL residency programs. And it really positions us to capture current perspectives and opportunities regarding um, our residency programs from directors, from other residents throughout the United States. Couldn't say any better myself. Whew. You guys are you guys are natural podcasters. I'm just saying that. <laughs> so we're going to talk to everyone about today. This is actually an article. What we want to do is just kind of look into what other HSPA programs are doing and to kind of see if I identify any gaps or to see if there's any um, opportunities for growth. It's going to be an AJHP. I'm still waiting on the proofs, so <laughs> it's going to come out soon. But guys, be on the lookout for that. But we're just essentially going to be highlighting this for you all. So, Joelle, can you hit us with the background info? AJHP defines leadership as an executive obligation to impact patient care and advance the profession. And an AJHP Foundation Scholar in Residence Report, Sarah White identified leadership as a gap within the pharmacy profession. Due to a disproportionate number of pharmacists with the interest in leadership and lack of information to pre prepare pharmacists to form a leadership opportunity. Some of the criteria for implementing a HSPAL residency program to immediately include follow the following components. Business proposals, rotation development, preceptor recruitment, marketing plans, financial provision, and ASHP accreditation. Now, well said, Joel. And just in case you guys didn't know, Joel was our fearless leader in PARC, being the research chair. Am I correct? That was the title? Research chair? Yes, you are correct. That's right. It's a master delegator. Um, Nias, do you mind uh, listing out there the criteria for implementation of an HSPL residency program? So, it has a couple different components attached to it. One, there needs to be a business proposal, of course, and then that the other criteria that's required would be a rotation development as the residents have a series of rotation within the two-year residency program curriculum. There also needs to be preceptive recruitment strategies, a marketing plan to prospect the residents, some type of monetary financial provision associated with it, and of course, accreditation by the American Society of Health System Pharmacists. Yes, ma'am. So... 
again, the audience is like, what is the importance and relevance of this topic? An inquiry with responsive measurement from Health System Pharmacy Administration and Leadership, Residency Program Directors and Residents to kind of distinguish variances between the programs and identify enhancement opportunities for key stakeholders. So Jacqueline, you mind telling them what our methodology kind of was? Yeah, absolutely. So we actually utilized the survey and we did this because we realized that we'll probably gather a lot more responses in a in a very good amount of time. And we used the survey with 20 questions uh, to look at the strengths and areas of opportunities that other HSPAL residency programs have and the perspective from residents and RPDs or residency program directors. And I think with what Nia has actually explained earlier in terms of all the different criteria for implementing the HSPL residency program. If you, if once we started looking deeper into the survey and just from our own personal experiences going being residents, we saw that there were inconsistencies with our program. Though some of us, some of us do have really baseline foundation with um, operations, rotation, and financial um, experience. None of it was really consistent throughout the nation and even with our own residencies. So this survey um, was definitely, and this this paper was definitely important for us to really analyze what is missing, what are the consistencies, what are the inconsistencies, and what can we do to actually bridge that gap and standardize. So, Joelle, based off of our results on our survey, what are some of the things that you would like to highlight in terms of uh, rotations and areas opportunities from both the RPD survey and the uh, resident portion of the survey? For the resident survey, it was really great to see that almost or nearly half of the RPDs within the list are participated. And areas of opportunity identified by program directors included community pharmacy leadership, professional organization involvement, and sterile compounding, as well as supply chain management. And about a third of the residents who participated reported that they had the least exposure to community pharmacy leadership, HR, informatics, and professional organizations. So there are some recommendations for HSPA residency programs to incorporate, incorporate C-level experiences, improve alumni engagement, develop longitudinal HR experiences, and encourage resident credential obtainment. Yeah. Absolutely. And Jacqueline, on the following slide, do you want to kind of highlight what were some of our other findings in the RPD portion of the survey? Yes. Yeah, so I think it was very unique to see that most, more than half of the participants from our preceptors or RPDs from, came from academic health centers. And a lot of the, the majority of the programs were mostly PGY1 and a PGY2, which was, which is more traditional. However, only about 48% of HSPA residents uh, were, or the residents were able to actually manage a team. So usually w with graduating from an HSPA program, some programs do have the opportunity to be able to be able to have the residents either manage interns or have pharmacy technicians that manage that team. However, only 48% less than half um, have been able to actually have that opportunity to do that. Of course, with hiring, we have really good participation with about 80% of residents being able to participate in hiring decisions. But however, over, actually, this is a really good thing. Over 60% of residents end up as pharmacy manager or ops manager, which is exactly the roles that prospective residents do want to end up in. So overall, it was very good uh, response. Uh, Naya, do you want to highlight anything else you saw from the RPD portion of the survey? Sure. So about 70% of them have stated that their program design was a traditional first year experience and a administrative second year experience because sometimes there's that division between the first year being clinical and the second year being administrative as well. And some other things that Jacqueline was highlighting in terms of recruiting and hiring and involvement, HR management decisions, that was very similar to what the residents were saying. So that, that kind of stayed fairly consistent. So kicking it back to Nyaz, do uh, you mind telling us what we found about the resident survey? Sure. So over half of the participants came from academic facilities with programs 
with a, both a PGY-1 and PGY-2 degree, along with that concomitant Master's of Science degree, whether it's in public health or from leadership and administration or perhaps a business administration degree. And then also 70% have stated that they do get that pharmacotherapy specialist certification during the second year of their residency program tenure, whether or not that's within the fall or spring terms that is. And about 46 to have stated that they do have some level of communication with that c suite executive leadership, but overall the most improved leadership skills noted were, were about communication, project and time management, emotional intelligence and those soft skills and also executive presence. Yeah, um, I was blown away with how many actual residents during their second year get their BCPS and I think it's pretty important why you want to get a fairly strong traditional PGY1 experience um, definitely helps you stand out kind of give you gives you just a better understanding of just your pharmacy department in terms of like clinical skills which I think is really very important to have as a leader I was very surprised there weren't a lot of MHAs because I came from an MHA program and I thought there's gonna be a bunch of MHAs considering now we all work in health systems um, a lot of MS degrees and a portion of MBA degrees and then summarizing our recommendations, we are talking about incorporation of C-suite level experiences. What were your thoughts on that kind of feedback a little bit? As a HSPA resident, I think having C-suite level experience and exposure to members of that leadership team are very important to be able to know and navigate the expectations as a leader in pharmacy and knowing what is expected at a hospital and health system level and then being able to bring your team towards that same common vision for the entire hospital. So I think it's really important to be able to know and get experience with members of the C-suite. The next recommendation that we had about encouraging alumni engagement. Yeah, I believe it absolutely does increase networking and mentorship opportunities. Having the, that important set of interactions with alumni within your program can really help bolster the confidence you have with being able to attain the uh, employment position that you want post-residency. and also helps you connect with the experiences of those that have come before you, whether or not it's one year prior or 10 years prior. Just having that interaction and being able to learn from their experiences can really go a long way. Yeah, and HR management, and I'm going to cut Jacqueline because that's what I'm passionate about right now because I have like 40 inches of roll, roll under me. Uh, as a longitudinal experience, I felt, like that, I felt that during my PGY2 year, it was kind of broken up in pieces depending on the objectives of that rotation. It was like I did it backwards. It's like the very beginning of the rotation, I got to sit in on a positive disciplinary action, and then I got, I got to participate in some recruiting and some interviewing, but I never like got to see the whole process, onboarding, 36 to day 90. It was all kind of like in bits and pieces, and it was kind of difficult to pull together. And this was even feedback that we got from some of the previous graduates from these programs was that get as much HR experience as possible because once you complete your program, you're going to have direct reports and you're going to be responsible for people. Um, residents may need to assume more supervisory roles, especially in recruitment, disciplinary, and coaching experiences. You mentioned you had positive disciplinary action. What does that, what does that mean? <laughs> I'm glad you said that. That's essentially when you get to the point of verbal warnings, um, discussions, write-ups, termination. We just call it positive discipline because we don't go. You don't go right to termination, right? You get more verbals see. written. So for in my institution, we call it positive discipline because discipline itself just sounds kind of scary. I'm very glad you said that because our initial rough draft, we wrote positive discipline and even the reviewers are like, yeah, say something else because that sounds scary. <laughs> so, like it doesn't work together. <laughs> yeah, they contradict each other. Yeah, but that's how we yeah. spin it. So I'm kind of glad you spoke out because you were talking about financial management earlier and one of our recommendations was a financial experience also as a longitudinal. Um, what were your thoughts on that, Jacqueline? Oh, absolutely. So during my time as a resident, um, I remember asking specifically because I had clinical rotations as well as um, operational rotations and management rotations. And I specifically asked 
for my finance, my finance rotation to be right at the start or right before budget for preparing for the next fiscal year. And I, I really thought that I had the best time and really my program was very flexible in allowing me to have that opportunity to see the pre and the post and the during. And even after I left my finance rotation, I still made sure that I included myself in all of those meetings and participated. So it's importance is, 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 is vital. Just knowing you don't, when you assume your role as a manager or operation uh, manager like you are, Oscar, or really any leadership role, uh, having that background and having that experience is very vital because budget season is just one section and there's so many other things that go in throughout the year that needs to be accomplished. So uh, I think I had a very good experience, but I really definitely wish that it was something that was spread out throughout the whole year. And uh, it was something that, you know, I would be able to talk to my leaders about uh, constantly and gain more more of an experience. But overall, I had a good section. It just would have been better if it was longer. Naya, uh, do you have any thoughts on what we're talking about in terms of these longitudinal experience uh, recommendations? Absolutely. So actually, um, I have a very similar experience with my finance rotation, which I'm currently still within. But it it's began very much at the beginning of the fall term, we could say, right before budgeting season, of course, and my responsibility was to review the current annualized uh, budget protect projection of what our uh, total cost would be for 2019, and then compare that to what we project will be for the next year with consideration of also the addition of new medications to our formulary and also looking at what the inflation rates would be for some of our high impact and high volume use items. Uh, no, no, it's all really great feedback. Couldn't agree with you guys anymore. And it's funny because like we're all from three different, based on our training. Like my train was in Orlando, and I as you were in Houston, Jacqueline you're in Chicago, and we all kind of same. Like man, we wish it was just a little bit longer. And just like there's a great just a quickly cap on the finance piece is that I think the financial piece is most important because even though our initial jobs are going to be kind of like the operational manager role, the key thing about being a director is being able to manage those finances. So it's like, it's, that's the end goal for most HPA residents, right? Like long-term goals to be a director of pharmacy. So during our training, I think that's when it'll be most beneficial. I would say as a new leader who has stepped into a inpatient super, supervisory role, HR management is one of the areas of opportunity that I think we can give our HSPA health residents as a longitudinal experience. Being able to have that, build those relationships or see those challenges that HR has over time is a stronger background or experience to give our residents for them to be able to be successful or when they are the ones in the hot seat, I would say. The only other thing I wanted to highlight based off of community experiences was that that's kind of like where the jobs are now. You're going to see a lot of inventory infusion leadership related positions, a lot of specialty positions. So again, HSPAs are looking for careers in, out in the community, population health, like those kind of areas. Like there's, Definitely opportunities there. Joelle, can you tell us a little bit and, and like summarizing on the improvement of credentialing obtainment? For credentialing, I would recommend residents obtain preparatory materials or guidance on how to obtain BCPS certification or other types of certification just to differentiate themselves when they're looking for a position after residency. I think this will help them stand out and be able to help them land a job. So I think any way to help our residents prepare for this intense exam and being able to demonstrate all the great things that they learned from their residency will help the resident and help the institution be able to move the profession as well. Yeah, and again, like 70% of the residents that took this survey were credentialed uh, BCPS certified. So I think that kind of says how important it is to have a traditional PGY-1. So you can take that incredibly difficult test. <laughs> I know uh, Naya's had some also, I know, I know like um, 
because this is kind of her section when she was kind of going in detail about other credentialing opportunities. What are your thoughts on this recommendation, Nias? Sure. So credentialing is very important as well uh, for those of us that completed the Pharmacy Administration and Leadership Residency Program track. And not only does it provide that that sort of justification that we are just as experienced as someone that completed a postgraduate year one pharmacy practice residency, but it really goes back to a test that we have the same amount of clinical skills as any other pharmacy resident graduate and that we're very much capable of managing um, clinical cases if we were to pursue that route as a clinical pharmacist or perhaps the clinical manager, but also it's important to have that clinical foundation as well since that can go a long way with needing to make uh, decisions that, although it could seem indirect at times, it should also have that direct patient care impact as well. All right, so going around the room or the teleconference room, because all of us are in different parts of America right now, <laughs> um, what was like the one takeaway, the one thing that's kind of surprised each and every one of you individually about this survey? Um, I'll start with Jacqueline. Uh, I would say that 70%, again, I think I mentioned it earlier, that the 70% of pain BCTS, and the reason I say that is because I think during – during my admin residency, I had preceptors kind of mention that admin residents or really admin residents are not, or there's this notion in general that admin residents are not clinically enough and then admin, they're, they're kind of half and half. So we kind of have one foot because we were doing the PGY1 experience and then the other foot is an admin, which would be the second year. And there's this just weird notion that we're not clinical enough. And to see that a lot of the residents do go pursue these further certification BCPS, really placing themselves at the same or at the same level as other clinicians, is, is it was very it's very good to see. Yeah, in terms of credentials, watch out for future BCPS just in like leadership or something like that. They better chill out. <laughs> uh, Joelle, <laughs> Joelle, you got anything that surprised you? I was surprised at the number of RPDs and residents who participated. I'm really glad to see the high participation rate. And it was really nice to track the trends that were displayed. I think it's great to see and share about all, a lot of the common themes and to be able to share that with stakeholders and have this information improve and be used to make our programs better. I think it was great to see the diversity in the types of programs and what and where HSPA residents want to take the future and the leadership and their leadership training. All right, Nias? I thought it was interesting how in the residency program director survey, over 80% had some or limited involvement of their residents in human resources management decisions in that it can be such a huge component of any operations manager or anyone who has a supervisory level of employment experience. And actually, I remember asking my residency program director early on as a first-year resident about what's the part of her career that takes the largest chunk of her day or the largest portion of it at times, and she actually said human resources. And as myself being in a program that does have a longitudinal internship program track for pharmacy students, I really do value that engagement with the pharmacy interns because not only are you functioning as a manager of, of direct reports, you also can, can also serve as a mentor throughout their time as a pharmacy student. Yeah, and for me, I would have thought one of the area opportunities would have been supply chain and informatics automation. But to be honest, that was pretty high on everyone's list. And I think it was because, I guess, healthcare itself kind of forced us to be masters of supply chain with drug shortages, uh, 340B. So it like, it kind of like forced us to already be well versed in automation and supply chain. So I thought that was interesting that 
you know, yeah, these HP residents that are going to be well trained in medication management. So I was very happy to see that because I was kind of receiving that training myself. Moving on. So limitations uh, for our article, the sample size, um, of course, you'd want 500 to 1,000 respondents, but for surveys, we have over 30% in each one, like kind of like Joel's highlighting um, very well. Participation, like getting more of a large, larger sample size. And then these are all resident dependent experiences because uh, their portion of the survey just kind of talking about areas of improvement. Overall, the common theme, and if my RPD or direct can ask me, is like, hey, like, would you learn about all these other programs? And it's kind of almost like, at the same time, it's like, yeah, the strengths and operations, but all these programs kind of have the ability to customize their program to the resident and based off of their interests. Um, I don't know if you guys can agree to that, but that was kind of like a common theme, in my opinion. Well, guys, that wraps up our episode. I appreciate you guys making time out of your very, very busy schedules to participate in this episode. You guys get a podcast score of A pluses. You guys knocked it out the park. We had malfunctions, uh, techno- technological issues. We weathered the storms. Thank you all very much. Um, again, I'm going to give you guys an opportunity to introduce yourselves again on the way out. Hi, so, yeah, everyone. This was Niaz Dehim again. I am the current second year pharmacy administration and leadership resident at Houston Methodist Hospital. And I'm Jacqueline Igwe. I graduated from a PGY2 HSP residency focused in specialty at University of Chicago Medicine, and I'm the current clinical ambulatory pharmacist at Baptist Health, South Florida. Thanks again. I'm Joelle Ferrano. I was an HSPA resident at University of Chicago and current inpatient pharmacy supervisor at Heinz VA Hospital. All right, and uh, my name is Oscar Santalo. I did my residency program combined one and two at Avent Health Orlando, and I'm the operations and compliance coordinator at Avent Health Orlando. So I'm like one of the ones I stayed on. Thanks guys for leaving me out. You can follow everyone here, Jacqueline, Niaz, Joel on LinkedIn, uh, myself included. Uh, and you can follow me at, on Twitter at farmsohard_os. underscore um, OS. Again, thank you guys for listening to this episode. Take it easy.